talk a little bit today about this guy. And this guy is the elephant in the room. Operate pretty much, have always operated under two polar opposite um, theories of, of learning and teaching. And those are um, instructionalist model versus, versus a constructivist. And when I say instructionalist, I mean um, it, the, what we see in most traditional classrooms where we have the kids facing forward in rows, um, working quietly at their desks, um, while the teacher in the front of the room leads the whole class and um, imparts their knowledge to the kids. And, and, and that philosophy has, has dominated um, our schools, for the vast majority of our schools, for um, the better part of, of uh, 150 years. Uh, really since the beginning of the, or even before the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Um, the other philosophy that's, that's pretty much in opposition to this um, is constructivism, the idea that people construct their own meaning. Um, and with, with that philosophy, um, a teacher doesn't necessarily have to be in charge of, of imparting all the knowledge. In fact, they can't. The kids have to construct it for themselves where the student has to come up with their own meaning. Um, more recently, we have uh, this idea of social construction, that, that we don't construct knowledge on, on our own. We um, construct it as groups, that there's a social component to learning that is really necessary. And what we've been doing for the last 20 years uh, with technology integration in schools is we've been trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. We've been trying to um, take take this new technology and apply it on what we've already done. And that just doesn't work. Children learn by experience of the world around them. That was the message of the Swiss educationist Jean Piaget. And hearing it, schools brought everyday objects into the classroom, creating a revolution in the education of young children. Crayon, glue, cardboard, blocks. These are the standard building materials from which children build their minds. Papert worked with Piaget and realized that the computer should come in along with the mud pies. Whereas what we really have to think about is what produces involvement, engagement, what grabs the individual. And so it's much more related to love than to logic. It's much more related to sex than to abstraction. It's much more related to how you see yourself as fitting into the social and cultural fabric, including how you see television. Is it something that's being done to you or something that you want to appropriate? That it's a matter of, of, of knowing how to put subject matter in the right sort of logical order in order for people to understand it. Education has very little to do with explanation. It has to do with engagement, with falling in love with the material. When I was in third grade, my parents bought an Apple II computer. And before then, um, I was often placed in special needs classrooms because I have a condition called dysgraphia, which means I have trouble converting my thoughts um, in my language that is my brain into written word using my hand. Um, my handwriting was just illegible and hard for anyone to read. Um, when, I, when I was introduced to this computer, that changed. Um, I was able to type my thoughts and my teachers realized that I didn't really need to be in the special needs classroom anymore. Um, I was able to be mainstream with the rest of the students and, and later on excelled. Uh, but what most people have used this computer for from that time on, I and mean, at that time people were starting to put these computers in schools, um, was for things like this, like work on trail and number munchers, which were programs that were designed to teach students um, curricular concepts such as math and reading. Um, in a, in a way that was entertaining. Um, and this really was not engagement. I mean, the, these certainly, these, these had a, a certain level of, of fun, but after a little while, they, they really didn't grab the, my attention or the attention of other students that I know as much as, as uh, we had hoped or people had hoped uh, the computer would do. What, I, what was really engaging and what I would spend countless hours on when I was a kid was doing this. This is pro you know, programming, figuring out how those programs work and um, and how I can write my own programs and my own software. 
so basically the computer was really great as a content creation tool um, and, and really great at engaging, engaging me as well as other students in content creation and not so great at content consumption. Commercial game developers have realized this for a while now um, that if they design a game where people have to be doing something or making something or solving real problems that players are going to be more engaged and spend a lot more time with their product. Uh, the first case was Zelda, um, then Civilization IV, EverQuest, and World of Warcraft are all great examples of games where players will devote countless hours um, to solving open-ended problems or, or compete in open-ended campaigns. And essentially, they're engaging with, with the product as a, as a producer as well as a consumer. While World of Warcraft or EverQuest may not be appropriate for the school setting, there are today a, a ton of opportunities or options out there to engage students as, as content creators, not just content consumers. Uh, programs like Game Maker 7, Scratch, Movie Maker, iMovie, and, and Photoshop um, are, all, are all platforms or programs where students can produce things or make things or engage with the content um, rather than just be entertained by it. To make effective use of, of these tools like Scratch and other, other open-ended um, tools that are, are good for content creation really requires uh, a constructivist approach in the classroom. Um, additionally, a lot of these, these tools like Scratch um, have an added benefit of, of leading students towards understanding of broader concepts and kind of a hidden curriculum, um, if you will. Because in, ga in engaging in, in using a tool like Scratch, students are also reinforcing um, broader understanding of math concepts, um, such as uh, linear algorithmic thinking, um, some basic understanding of, of geometry and algebra, um, and, and spatial reasoning. Whereas programs like Number Munchers and Oregon Trail, which relied a lot on um, drill practice for students to, to learn concepts. Um, these open, open content creation tools like Scratch um, are not as easy to tie directly to content standards, which, which kind of causes kind of a problem in our, our current um, environment where everything is driven by the test and driven by um, how we how we are going to line things to um, to what the state is mandating for us. However, um, with with these tools, you're going to get greater engagement than you will with the other. So really, successful technology integration involves both engagement as well as being able to tie the learning to our needs as, as both mandated to us by the state as well as what we perceive ourselves as teachers as as needing from, from, leaving from the students. Um, and so the successful tech integration is really more about how do you, de how do you construct a, a, a well-defined project, um, or how do you construct a lesson where students are going to be engaged um, with an idea or a problem, rather than which tool are you going to use to teach a concept. Um, and so with tools like Scratch and tools like Game Maker 7, or, or Movie Maker, or Photoshop, or iMovie, what the teacher really needs to focus on is how, what are you going to have the kids using those tools for? And a lot of the student engagement can come directly from the student interacting and creating content using that tool. 